I got my N64 the day of the first UK price drop, thanks to an agreement with my dad, which I think was made under the assumption that the price drop would be a lot further away from launch than what it actually was. It was a mere two months after release, and Nintendo knocked 100 quid off the price, reducing the console to 150 quid. And while everyone else had Super Mario 64, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire to show off their new machine, I opted for the brand new release, Wave Race 64. Now, part of this was down to the fact that in the couple of months the system had been available, I had absolutely rinsed the other two titles at a mate's house. But the other reason was because I had actually already played quite a bit of Wave Race 64 and had been jonesing for it for months. You see, in 1996, me and the same aforementioned mate got pulled out of school for a day to go to Tomorrow's World Live and have a big day of science and learning. This lasted minutes, because once we'd entered the Birmingham NEC, the first thing we saw was a massive black truck with a massive N64 logo on the side, the trailer was opened on the side, and it revealed a bunch of demo pods. So we queued up, played some games, got kicked off, and just went and queued up again all day. <laughs> They had the entire UK launch lineup there, but also some stuff that Europe didn't get straight away, like Mario Kart 64, and of course, Wave Race 64. And like literally anyone who was suddenly told to figure out that control pad and analog movement in a very short amount of time from zero experience with anything like that beforehand, there was a fair bit of initial struggle. And although I wouldn't say I didn't get Mario 64, but it certainly was a bit overwhelming. It was... Not really the environment to take in a game that was so mind-blowingly ahead of everything else that you'd played in your life up to that point, from a visual and technology standpoint. Wave Race 64 looked amazing, but also, it is a racing game, and that's much more approachable. And it actually ended up completely selling me on analog control almost immediately. Within one race, I was able to appreciate the subtlety of the movement, the ability to turn sharply or make the slightest of adjustments to my racing line, and then I quickly learned how to ride the waves and how that could affect my lap times and which one of the four selectable riders felt the best to me, and I could feel it getting its hooks in. I wanted to get good at it and then it was home time and I had no idea when I would get to play it again. The controls of Wave Race 64 just feel so right. And sure, Mario 64 is the perfect combination of hardware, software, and input method, but Wave Race 64, for my money, is a close second. Once I'd set up my N64 and fired up Wave Race, within seconds of that first race, I'd already picked up from where I left off at Tomorrow's World Live. The feeling of it had never left me. It's just so natural. It's like playing the original Super Mario Brothers. Once you know how that game feels in the hand, the weight and inertia of Mario's movement, it never leaves you. One of my favourite sensations in any game ever is when you pull the stick down towards you, either slightly to the left or right, and have the jet ski carve through the water and turn back on itself. It's almost impossible to describe accurately, but it's so intuitive and instinctive and feels perfect. You could jump into the Dolphin Park training course with zero knowledge of the controls and within minutes of just experimenting and playing around, you'll know exactly what you can and can't get away with when it comes to the handling. You can't, of course, talk about Wave Race 64 without mentioning the water and specifically the waves. Shigeru Miyamoto himself maintains that Wave Race 64 uses 80% of the N64's power just to run the water effects and to this day, they're still right up there with the very best of whatever the current generation of games can throw out. Now, obviously, they're not just visually impressive, but are the key element to why Wave Race 64 still feels fresh and fun to play. You see, the waves aren't totally random. After some extended play, you'll notice them appearing in similar places. But this is actually a brilliant little thing, because as you go around the courses, you'll slowly learn when a large wave would come in, and you start to develop tactics around whether to push through them to keep your speed up or to take a jump off the top of them, with some even allowing shortcuts by leaping over parts of the scenery. 
The way that you deal with the constant movement of the water becomes just as important as part of your race strategy as your racing line is. And there is some variance that means that you're not just an autopilot. Usually the speed in which you make it around each lap means that you might be in front or behind the timing of a wave appearing. So top lap times sometimes require you to slow down a little bit to wait for a wave to spawn so you can use it to your advantage. The courses are all excellent, there's 8 in total with 6 available on the first difficulty championship and the other 2 being added one by one as you go up through the difficulties. As well as the usual differences in structure and complexity, they also have variances in regards to water movement, size and frequency of waves. For instance, Marine Fortress is set out at sea and has you dealing with waves aggressively crashing up against its walls, while Drake Lake has none at all, acting as a faster sprint style race. The best thing about these courses is how they have their own unique vibe. The aforementioned Drake Lake with its beautiful mirrored surface and fog that lifts as you go through the laps. Sunset Bay, a big orange ocean of fucking iron brew. Port Blue, an action packed chase around and sometimes through these giant parked up tankers. The game also has an all timer soundtrack. Each level has its own brilliant theme that actually adds a finishing touch to their atmosphere. And also, most of the pieces of music in the game feature this brilliant little leap motif of the Wave Race 64 theme scattered throughout them. It's one of my favourite things about the game, full stop. As you increase the difficulty of Championship, some of the early tracks get new, more challenging routes added to them. For instance, a sluice gate opens in Marine Fortress on the second and third Championships that reveals a twisty, turning path that almost halves your lap time providing you don't crash into the walls when trying to get through it. Now, it's not just obvious changes, because Wave Race 64 is actually made up of slalom races, with yellow and red boys requiring you to pass either on the left or right of them. Pass five in a row and you get a full speed boost, and miss one and you're significantly slowed down, and if you miss five overall, you're disqualified. Now, as you move up through the difficulties, the position of these boys is also changed, and this requires for not only more skilled handling of the jet ski to navigate them all, but also allow the developers to subtly reshape the course, allowing you into areas that previously you might have had to cut past completely. It's a genius way of getting a bit more variety out of the eight tracks. The N64 was home to a lot of absolutely belting racing games, but many would say that those games were bettered by sequels or similar titles that came out after them, although I don't necessarily agree with this in some cases. The follow-up on the GameCube has its moments, but doesn't come close to the quality on offer here. Games like Hydro Thunder are a lot of fun, but lack the water effect quality or the inspired track design. Underrated PS2 jet ski game Splashdown is probably the closest that has come to dethroning Wave Race 64, but let's just say the overall aesthetic is a bit of an acquired taste. So you're sure this isn't too scary for me? Come on, this is like the best ride they've got. It's going to be great. No aquatic racing game has ever come close to this. It's still unique, it still feels fresh, and above everything else, it's still extremely good. Wave Race 64 is easily one of my favourite games of all time. Alright everyone, as always, thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more videos, you can subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, you can go to the Patreon address that's on the screen there. I now have a Discord that is open to everyone. But if you subscribe to the Patreon, you're allowed in the top secret chat channel there where we share the things that we can't share with the rest of you. And I will leave that as cryptic as I possibly can. But anyway... You know what to do. If you want to support the channel, it's all there. I much appreciate it. And if you want a Discord invite, find me on Twitter and uh, shout at me. And um, we'll make it happen. Anyway, cheers for watching. See you next time.